my name is Marco. Uh, I had uh, already the opportunity to meet all of you, more or less. And uh, I come from the University of the Basque Country and uh, in collaboration with uh, the Technalia Research and the Innovation uh, Center. Uh, my PhD, I'm at the, uh, I finalized my first year of uh, PhD, so basically the presentation of today will be on the prima, the, the first insight about uh, the literature review and uh, the, the aim for, for the future research. So first of all, I would like to contextualize, contextualize a little bit my research because um, we, the context is a little bit different from uh, what we have seen uh, so far. Uh, let's say that uh, we have analyzed tra uh, knowledge transfer, innovation and technology from a policy point of view, while uh, my research uh, deal with these themes from an organization point of view. So from uh, the strategy and the management of uh, organization. Why? Because I think that uh, policy is an important factor to move the, the let's say, the transition on uh, towards sustainable path. But I think that uh, another, the other part of the story rely on the organization firms itself. If they are able to, uh, to engage in the learning path to, let's say, to uh, enhance the capability, their capability. So let's say, let's see the knowledge transfer when we talk about organization. Knowledge transfer uh, is still the process uh, in which one unit affects another unit, but uh, in this case, units are inside, the, let's say, inside the organization system of the firms. That could be people, could be department or product line or so far. And uh, the, the, the knowledge transfer happens between uh, uh, knowledge repositories. Knowledge, there are different classification of knowledge uh, repositories. Here, to, be, to simplify the thing, we can imagine uh, three repositories that are member, tool, and task, and there are different uh, knowledge flow between, uh, between them. And uh, the, the, um, the, the competitiveness of a firm depends on the efficiency on which this exchange of knowledge are carried out. I mean, uh, uh, in, uh, the, the, the competitiveness for a elastic advantage respect other firms depend on the ability of the firm itself to uh, integrate this different kind of uh, knowledge. So now the things are even more complex when uh, we take into consideration sustainability because as we uh, know sustainability includes other aspects that are not that familiar with the business, business view that the society, the community, the environment so the, the, the organization are forced to extend their system boundaries and include other uh, transfer knowledge, other transfer knowledge concerning other outsider uh, repositories. And, uh, uh, and these this, uh, repositories outside need to be included if the firms really want to integrate sustainability and being competitive on the long term. And I would uh, add uh, um, that it's not enough to identify and explain the knowledge transfer, but it, it is the next step is to understand how these knowledge transfer are integrated with each other, because it's not uh, just about uh, the direct uh, effect that the knowledge transfer has on, a, on a, another repository, but it's all the system and uh, understanding how the, the system, how the repository within the system are interconnected each other and how they can evolve over time, there is the, the real, uh, the real uh, um, enabler to, to really, to really uh, achieve a sustainable business model. So now what's the, the situation today? Today, the organization recognized that sustainability is important for long-term competitiveness, but at the last, just a minority of them uh, actually is integrated sustainable-oriented innovation. Why? Because there is a depth of study on how to measure sustainability. That is to say, they, they are struggling to prove the value that sustainability innovation could have on their business. And uh, 
there is a, a little attention paid on uh, the decisional part occurring within organization when it's about sustainability decision and in general about uh, the integration of different tools because as we, we will see there is there are not integrated each other this is a um, a simplified uh, decision structure that uh, could happen in, in whatever films. We can see the top-down, let's say, transfer knowledge when it's the senior management level that adopt decision to affect the top-down, the, the, the product development with respect to sustainability decision. In general, these decisions uh, are driven by um, market view and exploration activity and uh, these are decisions affecting long term. On the other end, the, tr the transfer knowledge, the bottom-up transfer knowledge is the, wa the, the one coming from the product development uh, level and it affects the senior management. And generally, these are, uh, um, these are lead by exploitation, uh, exploration activity or a resource-based uh, resource uh, view. Uh, the next step has been a uh, uh, literature, no literature review, a summary of all the tools, all the standardized procedure and the methodology that films could apply uh, in order to enact sustainability, in order to identify if uh, they are integrated with each other, where is the direction of the knowledge transfer, if it is from the top or from the bottom and if uh, uh, this knowledge transfer are uh, for uh, communication aim uh, to the outside the stakeholder. And uh, this is, uh, uh, thanks to this, I could uh, visualize that most of the tools are not really integrated with each other. For, for example, a tool uh, from, the, um, from the production level, like a life cycle assessment, is not really integrated with uh, the strategy adopted at the uh, senior management for two reasons mainly. One, because results from uh, operational level are not uh, are not comprehensible from a strategic uh, point of view, and on the other hand, because a tool like life cycle assessment provides results that uh, most of the time arrive too late to affect strategy. Uh, the next step has been uh, to suggest a framework, uh, a transition path of uh, organization strategy, where we can see in, well, the first, uh, the first step, uh, obviously there is no decision about the incorporation of sustainability, so no knowledge transfer at all. In the second one, the efficient level, uh, we can see a knowledge transfer, a bottom-up uh, knowledge transfer from uh, the operation level to the bottom-up, to the um, top management, were based on uh, resource uh, view and uh, exploitation activity. And this is a transfer, a knowledge transfer based on efficiency. Efficiency, why? Because the, the operational level is more concerned with uh, optimizing the production process, but it is not, uh, it could be not sustainable. So efficiency is not uh, equal to to, su to, su to sustain. On the other hand, when we have a top-down transfer knowledge, so decision take it, taken at the top management, we have an effectiveness uh, approach. Uh, top management uh, adopt decisions that affect effectively the strategy on the long term, but could be not efficient. So, in the long, um, finally, the, the last, uh, let's say, the last uh, step is uh, where there are the true uh, transfer of knowledge from the bottom and from the top down that they enable a learning loop within uh, the manager and within and uh, between and with the operational level. Uh, now, the future research, I would like to. Uh, to integrate the different figures that uh, I'm going to, to to detect in the literature, in order to uh, try to integrate uh, each other. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, these are the, the economic driver, and they are inter interrelated with uh, each other, and they they provide uh, how the system behave on the long run. 
and this is uh, well uh, uh, established in the literature. Now I would like to add other uh, other figures that are the, those related with sustainability. There could be social impact or environmental impact, uh, and so on, and uh, see how these different uh, figures could affect the economic driver in order to see if uh, sustainability in the long run could pay uh, could pay out the business of, uh, of firms. Um, and I was thinking to use the as methodology system thinking because it's a promising uh, uh, approach in order to adopt this systemic uh, point of view. And then possibly if uh, I will be able to identify archetype of this uh, let's say sustainable model, I would like to, um, to use the simulation tool in order to see if they, if they could have uh, really organization. And uh, that's it. Can they use so many not uh, possible subjects for uh, enriching and research? So I, I, I always found uh, interesting in possible connection between let's say uh, ecological economics and, and, and labor or economics and organizational things okay mm -hmm. which is uh, pretty strange and not not so consolidated in the, the interconnection between uh, the labor and, and the environment so uh, my suggestion is this is uh, from from my point of view uh, uh, a possible uh, an, an enrichment uh, using these this uh, in the, researchers and frameworks that we have uh, on the labor side and uh, uh, intended a very broad meaning. More specifically, uh, knowledge transfers may be uh, linked to uh, within organizations, mm -hmm. uh, linked to uh, uh, conceptual analysis of uh, training. Uh, training could be general, specific, formal, informal, and especially uh, specific and informal training. Uh, could be uh, a way to, to channel uh, knowledge within organizations within, okay, so maybe useful, maybe not, but they uh, Second five, uh, internal labor markets. I, I, I'm not an expert, but uh, a possible suggestion, uh, Professor David Marsden at LSE uh, is one of the key names in, in, uh, in the Department of Management of industrial relations. Uh, I've always uh, read his papers in, in specializing in internal labor markets. Uh, again, we have segmented in internal labor okay. markets in many. There are studies investigating the relationship between. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's another possible. Uh, I, I, I would talk Third point, a more effort, but maybe, uh, but even uh, Mars and as such. Uh, again, maybe you, so maybe not. Uh, uh, a stakeholder or an, an agent. Uh, uh, you have workers, you have also unions, uh, industrial relations uh, issues, and, and unions with, that vary across countries. Yeah. I mean, uh, I live yeah. in Italy yeah. and, 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 yeah. and in Romania, where unions are still very powerful. Uh, yeah, the other countries, they are, they are not, but yeah. maybe this is not so, so relevant, but even. So, so you, uh, you mean uh, include a um, specific uh, stakeholder like the union uh, or? Yeah, I mean, um, the, how the, the workers organize and, and uh, they could be unions, could be other ways of organizing uh, uh, workers. I mean, uh, so three possible, uh, but maybe the first two are more uh, relevant for, for your research. Great. Thank you. I will uh, check the, the reference. I have, a, I have a question of clarification, I guess. Um, yeah. It seemed to me, well, maybe you can clarify. It seemed to me what the, that you may be merging two sustainability concerns. Mm -hmm. One seems to be your dominant focus is really about organizational processes and their impacts, and that's related to reputation, and okay. etc. And, and really, this is quality management, resource efficiency within the firm, and then, then you looked at, at all these standardis, standardized yeah. approaches to sort of yeah. implement yeah. corporate sustainability. So this is one. Mm -hmm. And the other one would be uh, 
what I was expecting from your title, sustainability oriented innovation, mm -hmm. would be the you know changing uh, the products and services that are uh, yeah. uh, provided by the firm towards more sustainable products, maybe exploring completely new markets, shifting entirely markets. So recently, quite an interesting uh, case study about this. This is a huge global um, company making these uh, these uh, kinds of carpets, and and somehow yeah. the, the CEO yeah, got, got really inspired, yeah. and he completely decided, okay, this is I'm not doing this anymore. I don't want to be complicit, yeah. and from the really top management, completely reorient. Yeah. So I, it seems these yeah. are two. Uh, yeah, maybe I I haven't been that clear. I was uh, uh, answering to your question. I was thinking about. Uh, uh, Sustainable business model, so the, like the business uh, the teams making carpet. It was the last step. The last step where, uh, from the top management, they want to be sustainable and they affect the, 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 the production line to integrate sustainability in a, a, at the core of the system of their vision. Yeah. Vision. Whereas the first step are not uh, are just uh, improvement, just uh, partial improvement, partial uh, uh, steps towards to sustainability that are uh, essentially based on production of, resu of resources or uh, reduction of waste and uh, something like that. The last step, obviously, is when the company is uh, reach the, the um, a sustainable business model, business model for sustainability. Well, I was yeah, just yeah. not necessarily seeing this as, as a sequence, this, uh -huh. as just different models, different yeah. Uh, yeah. No, uh, no. orientation that the firm uh, can take. Um, and the second question I had is that maybe you can clear. It's always interesting to empirically ground uh, yeah. uh, your models that are very yeah. theoretical. And, and maybe you can talk about all this. Are you looking at specific companies? Are you looking at specific sectors? I think that I, I was thinking mainly uh, manufacturing sector for two reasons. One, because the data I think are more easy to retrieve because there are um, there is available more literature on manufacturing sector, and uh, it is easier from the point of view of to contextualize in uh, frameworks such as circular economy or something like that. Then uh, my idea was to generate these archetypes that are really general that could be applied to whatever uh, sector because at the last reputation or cost margin are uh, something that is common to all the kind of uh, business of, uh, of firms or sector. And then to validate, uh, to, so to take the, the archetype and then from them uh, trying to develop a more sophisticated model uh, broken down for with other different figures, customized with a, a case study. So adopting a case study to to to, to develop an, an archetype. Okay, um, I have just one. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, I mean, yeah, I can, kind of, I mean can, can you jump on that last question? Because I also got caught by two pieces of work as well. And, um, our large conversation was also if you're using a tool, you tend to promote it. So, uh, I thought social network analysis might be a very interesting mm -hmm. way to talk about flows of resources and information, um, but it would require a case study examination. Um, you know, it perhaps require, sorry, I, a, a case study. Do you do you have to choose uh, okay, an yeah, organization? Some, some, some case study, and it could yeah. be interesting because then you could actually choose one which believes that it's a cheesy, a cheesy achieving sustainability goals and one that is believes it's not yeah. and in a way you can see uh, the why, very, why? very simple social network tools uh, degree who's the most connected between this who is the person who kind of um, uh, the go-to for information flows or where their bottlenecks that don't succeed yeah. and that could be quite interesting in terms of where um, your bottom up and top down information gets halted or not yeah. um, so I mean but that's also because I've been working yeah, yeah, on it's yeah. not cool um, and then the second one, the, the archetypes thing is a great idea um, uh, because you don't have to do your own modeling. You can actually take the archetypes yeah, and they have associated yeah. behaviors that you can then um, uh, attach to, to it. Um, and I had a note, uh, did you draw the causal loop diagram in the uh, yeah, last uh, one? Yeah. So, so uh, I must send you an email of uh, uh, some of our really way in which we, we, we do that. So, Making sure they have the uh, polarity of the direction yeah, and the causation yeah, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because that'll add much more uh, dynamic dynamics yeah, to it. Yeah, you understand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Michael. Thank you.